the cocktail. Oh.
party with over 700 members. We are contesting this year's election with a list of 12 exceptional women. And we're calling for the repeal of the self-identification for determining sex on this. The new law encourages a belief that a man can change his sex as often as he feels like it just by going online. And that means he can enter women's spaces without being challenged. And when women took their concerns to the select committee about this bill, the MPs, the Labour and Greens women MPs, treated them with absolute disdain. And though most submissions were opposed to this bill, in fact it went through without a single dissenting voice, not from, not from the right, nor from the left. And recently an amendment to the Human Rights Act passed its first reading.
but you all know that you cannot change your sex. if I go into a toilet, a woman's toilet, and there's a male in there. Yeah. Well, why is it then we're not allowed to talk about it? It was mentioned yesterday, it was 130 days since the vote. And they said on the news that we've come far. Do you think we've come far? As a woman who has strong opinions about many things, I like to speak up. However, what has happened in New Zealand where women cannot speak in a public place without being vilified? So when I put a petition to Parliament about five years ago to remove gender ideology from schools, since then I have had uh, myself featured in a book named New Zealand's Underworld of Extremists. So because I stand up for children, because I'm a teacher and I'm concerned about their minds and how we're uh, inflicting a lot of harm on them, I'm an underworld extremist. I'm pretty sure I look dangerous to you. What do you reckon? I do have a vagina. Yes, I do. Women should not have to provide a reason and justify why they don't want men in our toilets. Yeah. It is our right. We are women. Men do not belong in our toilets. And I know that most of you men here do not want to be near our toilets. Yeah. Pretty sure that you guys don't want us females in your toilets. When I was a bit of a rebel, I remember going to a, a concert and I did go into a guy's toilet and they were not very happy with me. So, you know, I know, you know how we feel. And we appreciate you being here. We will not stop talking about this. Nobody will shut us down or silence us. We are women and until the Ministry for Women put at the top of the priority women's sex-based rights, we will not stop. Is that enough? No, I'll just give you an example of how harmful the gender ideology is in our schools with your children and your grandchildren. So I was teaching in a school where they first started bringing this rubbish in, the inside out group. They're infecting your schools. They came in because a child decided that they wanted to start the new year off as the opposite gender. So the inside out group come into the school, they train the teachers to uh, talk about whole lot of work stuff. They re-educate them and we know what re-education looks like if you're from a communist country. So about two days after that lesson, oh sorry, the inside out group actually had facilitators that took the lesson with the senior classes. And about two days after that lesson I was teaching one of these classes and there was a boy down the back on his um, iPad mucking around as kids do, you know, and I was just asking him what he was doing and he, um, you, you know on your iPad you get all these apps where you can change what you look like. So he said to me, I'm just seeing what I look like as a female. So this is serious stuff. This is happening here in Christ, sorry, in Christchurch. That wasn't Christchurch. It is happening in New Zealand. This is not just an American thing or overseas. It's happening here right now in New Zealand. I have teachers come up to me and thank me for putting the petitions up because they had three, four children in their classrooms wanting to identify as the opposite sex. They want to use different pronouns. And so the teachers are saying, well, unless you bring um, a signed letter from your parents, that's not happening. But there are teachers who are being forced out of the profession. There are teachers who have left the profession, really good teachers, and they are uh, just bringing in the woke ones who will actually agree and go along with what they want. So we need to have a revolution of the Ministry of Education and start again. And remove those woke people.
educate ministry. Yeah, well, we need to actually remove most of the ministry. Yeah, so it is happening. In Christchurch, I had a teenager send me a little video of when she recorded the assembly at her high school. It was Rainbow Week, and they were told they had to wear colours. She chose not to, she chose to wear black. All her teachers said to her that she was supposed to wear colours. Um, and anyway, then she wanted to sit out of the assembly because she knew what was going to happen. And they said, no, you have to attend it. So your children can't opt out of these things because it's everywhere. It's not just in the sex lessons, it's right throughout the whole school. So what happened was she recorded it without the teachers knowing, and it looks more like a little drag show than a school assembly. So you had two boys coming out in their glittery dresses. This is what is happening in our schools here in New Zealand. So I need to go and catch my plane. Thank you, everyone. leave the venue if you're ready to leave through that access or that, or that access over here. Do not go down there. Yeah. Sorry? Well, we're not finished yet, but I will at the end. But they are fabulous. Boys in blue. Lovely. Girls in blue. Lovely. More. Okay. Kellyanne. We could do 
to someone. We only use them when we're talking about them. And if we are able to tell people which pronouns to use when they talk about us when we are not there, this becomes compelled speech, which compromises our basic right to freedom of speech. Now, in a recent article in the UK Telegraph, Joe Bartosz, who's also a bit of an academic, says, ultimately, pronouns are chosen by the speaker to describe the subject.